Hello, my name is Sean Sperry and I am with IBM. In this video, we're going to talk about Spectrum Protect 8.1 and using object storage as a repository for the backend data for Spectrum Protect. Now, the specific difference of this video is we're going to be using IBM Cloud Object Storage, but rather than using an on-premise implementation of it, we're going to use an implementation of IBM Cloud Object Storage that is in the public cloud, uh, implemented by SoftLayer. Now this slide we've seen before, but I really like to present it because it's a very good overview of the different ways that Spectrum Protect allows you to store backend data. Traditionally, Spectrum Protect supported an on-premise solution with tape and or random access disk as storage repositories for the data. But over the last several releases, we have added object storage to our repository. Now, we've already done a video where we showed IBM Cloud Object Storage implemented as an on-premise solution or as an appliance to store backend data for Spectrum Protect. And what we're going to do in this video is demo and describe using object storage. But rather than use an on-premise based solution, we're going to use IBM Cloud Object Storage in the public cloud as implemented by soft layer. So we'll be using a pay-as-you-go methodology or billing model for the back-end storage for Spectrum Protect. Now IBM Cloud Object Storage in the public cloud is implemented by soft layer does give you some choices as to the type of service you want. Uh, from a performance perspective, you can choose either the standard service, which is the fastest, or the vault service, which is more of a archive type implementation or a slower implementation of IBM Cloud Object Storage. From a protection perspective, you can either choose regional service where the fault tolerance for the data stored in the object storage is only protected within the region and it's not protected from a regional disaster. Or can you can use the cross region service where site fault tolerance is uses IBM Cloud Object Storage erasure coding to save the data across three different sites. Now for our demo, what we're going to do is we're going to use a soft layer public cloud implementation of IBM Cloud Object Storage using the Amazon S3 API. And we are just going to uh, use a standard cross-region service as an example. This this demonstration would really be applicable no matter which service you chose. The difference would just be performance and potentially disaster recovery or how well your data is protected against an outage. We're going to authenticate against a public US Geo authentication endpoint when we log in. Uh, and we are going to be using to set up our storage pools a Spectrum Protect cloud container implemented in Spectrum Protect version 8.1. We're going to be using Windows Server 2012 R2 as our server. Again, it really is not going to make any difference to the demo because you're just defining a back-end storage pool or back-end cloud container storage pool to Spectrum Protect. So what platform it's running on is really irrelevant. Now, for our data, we're going to use the cloud container storage pool that is deduplicated, encrypted, and compressed. Obviously, you do want to use all of these features from Spectrum Protect if you're going to be sending data to the cloud just to ensure security and to send the least amount of data and retrieve the least amount of data that you possibly can. 
our demo is just going to be a backup and restore of some Windows files just to show you what that looks like and we'll also walk through the wizard to define the cloud container storage pool and also define the bucket on the soft layer implementation of IBM Cloud Object Storage. Okay, so to start the demo, what I'd first like to do is start out in the soft layer customer portal and I'll go to my object storage account and this account is using the Amazon S3 API. So it's actually using IBM Cloud Object Storage in the background. I'll go ahead and click on this account and what you're going to see is I start out with no bucket or vault created in the cloud. So before I define my cloud container storage pool to Spectrum Protect, I'm going to go ahead and create a bucket name. I'll go ahead and do an add bucket and I'll call it Protect Demo and I'll do an add. So now I have a bucket created called protect-demo and that is where I'm going to store my Spectrum Protect data in the cloud. Now I'll also go and show you the credentials that I previously set up. Uh, you can create credentials on for the Amazon S3 API on SoftLayer. And as you can see, I have created one with an access key ID that is defined here and a secret access key that is defined here. And those are what I'll use as my credentials to access this public cloud object storage. You also see down here the authentication endpoints that will be used to point Spectrum Protect to this cloud object storage. And in my case, I'm going to use the US Geo public endpoint when I define my storage pool in Spectrum Protect. So now we're ready to go ahead and create the Spectrum Protect storage pool. And I'll go to my Spectrum Protect Operation Center and I'll go to Storage Pools. And what I'll do is I'll just run through the wizard to add a storage pool. I'm going to call my storage pool Object Demo. And I'll go ahead and give it a name and choose Next. And now I'm ready to pick the type of storage pool that I want to create in Spectrum Protect. What I'm going to do is choose an off-premises cloud-based storage pool. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and choose Next. Now I've already configured my server to allow encryption and that is going to be set up or enabled by default because you are storing data in the cloud and I'm also going to pick my cloud type. Now here this can be a little confusing. You see here that we have an IBM soft layer cloud type. That is for soft layer swift storage. We are using the IBM cloud object storage with the Amazon S3 API on soft layer so that is what we're going to choose as our cloud type. And then finally what I'm going to do is change this region because we're using SoftLayer and not Amazon to be a other and specify the region or the URL for the access point myself. Now here I'm going to take my information from the SoftLayer customer portal and cut and paste it in. So the username is going to be my access key ID. I'm going to do a control C and a control V. My password is going to be my secret access key here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that and paste that in. My bucket name is going to be the bucket I defined 
which is going to be protect dash demo. So this is where the data is going to be stored. And then finally, my URL is going to be the USGO authentication endpoint. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that information over. And now I'll have all the access key ID, the password, the region, the bucket name, and the URL filled in. I'm going to go ahead and click Next, and the Spectrum Protect OC will go ahead and validate the cloud settings. So what it's doing is checking to make sure that you can indeed access the cloud object storage that you, you've given it using the bucket name, username, and password that you've defined. If you can't do that, then you have to go in and fix that information before you continue with the wizard. In my case, the validation succeeded, and now I'm able to specify a directory that I'm going to use as a accelerator cache for sending the data to the cloud, and I'm going to use a directory called c colon backslash cache. And now I'll go ahead and add the cloud container. So here you see my cloud container succeeded. And I'll just go ahead and do a close. And you'll see now I have a cloud container called object demo that contains no data. So now essentially my storage pool is defined on Spectrum Protect and I'm able to send data to the Spectrum Protect server and have it go to that cloud container. So now I'm ready to go ahead and just do a little demo of backing up and restoring to that cloud container just to let you see what the data looks like on the soft layer public cloud side. What I'll do is I'll go to services and here you see I have my standard policy, my standard policy sets. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and update that standard policy set to use my new storage pool. So I'm going to go ahead and use object demo here for my backup destination and also for my archive destination and then do a save, save the changes, close and then I'll go ahead and activate this new object demo storage pool as a backup destination and go ahead and activate it using the operation center. So now when I do a backup using any client in the standard management class, the backup destination will be the object demo cloud container storage pool that I just created, which in turn points to the public cloud object storage bucket that I created in SoftLayer. I'll just go ahead and pull up a Spectrum Protect Black Up Archive client, log into the server, and then I'll go ahead and do a backup. And I'll go ahead and look at my local file system, and I'll just pick up the lab files directory just to have some example of what to send and I'll go ahead and do a backup and let that backup run. So I'll go ahead and stop the recording while that backup runs. It'll take a little while because it's a couple gig of data and I'll start the recording when it completes. Okay so now my backup has completed I'll just go ahead and click on OK and what I wanted to do is go to the SoftLayer customer portal and I'll just go to object storage 
and I'll just show you that my data is now stored over here in this protect demo uh, bucket. So you'll see here the containers that Spectrum Protect has created on the soft layer cloud object storage implementation. I can of course now go ahead and go back and delete this data. Uh, so for instance, I'll go to lab files here and I'll go ahead and delete this data. And now I can go ahead and do a restore of the data. And when I do a restore, the data will be pulled back from the soft layer implementation of cloud object storage through the Spectrum Protect server and back to the system on which I'm doing the restore. Now again, this restore will take a minute or two to complete. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and pause the video while it runs just so you can see it finish. Okay, so that restore has now completed and I can of course go out here to my lab files directory and see the data restored. So that completes this demo of using a public cloud uh, object storage for backing up and restoring files from Spectrum Protect. I hope you find it useful and I look forward to seeing you on another video.